Hello everyone, Plato here, and today we will have our first build guide in Diablo 4 for our Ice Shard Sorceress dubbed Lucky Shards. I've been working on this build daily on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Bear, so stop by to see further updates and to say hi. This build, like most Ice Shards builds, is exceptional for AoE clears and quite decent for bossing as well. The clips you'll be seeing for the highlights for this build are all in decently high tier nightmare dungeons ranging from around 50 to 60 and up to tier 66 with one piece of gear swap, more on this later, without my full paragon setup. Currently, there's really no reason to push nightmare dungeons higher than tier 40ish for farming glyph XP other than the challenge provided. In ideal conditions, with the current state of the build, we can crit for as high as 700k per shard. This value will only increase as we fill out the last bit of our paragon board and of course, upgrade our glyphs past level 15. For regular content in World Tier 4 in solo and in groups, you'll have no issues and we'll be dropping enemies like no tomorrow. Let's jump right into our skills. We'll be using Ice Armor, Frost Nova, Teleport, Meteor, Flame Shield, and of course, Ice Shards. Deep Freeze or Inferno to replace Meteor here are also good options. Inferno is a great option to group up enemies prior to Raiment of the Infinite, and Deep Freeze is great for another Get Out of Jail free card. For our enchantments, we are going to be using Ice Shards and Firebolt. The Ice Shards enchantment effect makes Ice Shards automatically conjure and fly towards frozen enemies. This is great for our AoE clears, chances to proc lucky hit, more on this later, and additional damage that we will just proc without having to really worry about it. Moving to our Firebolt enchantment, this allows direct damage skills to apply an additional percentage burning damage over 8 seconds. This means all form of how we activate Ice Shards will apply burn, and we have a good amount of burn synergies. Side note, we can also swap out the Ice Shards enchantment for Frostbolt when we need to apply extra chill to stagger bosses in general play or nightmare dungeons. Just remember to swap it back to the Ice Shards enchantment after the boss encounter. That said, let's take a look at our class tree. Starting off, we grab one point into Firebolt for the enchantment and Frostbolt because we need to take one more point here and like I mentioned, helps with boss stagger. Next, we're going to take 5 points into our bread and butter damage dealing machine gun spell in Ice Shards. I have an additional 3 points here thanks to my gloves. Ice Shards launch 5 shards that deal X percentage of damage for each shard. This also deals an additional 25% increased damage to frozen enemies. One very important note that the in-game tooltip here doesn't tell you is that Ice Shards has a 1.25 times attack speed multiplier. This is important as we're going to want to actively find room to squeeze in some attack speed when possible. Don't confuse attack speed with basic attack speed, however, those are not the same thing. This is also a good time to mention Lucky Hit. As you can see, Ice Shards has an X lucky hit percentage. With all of our lucky hit chance in this build, we can get Ice Shards to around 33% lucky hit chance. If you're not aware of what lucky hit is, please take a look at the video in the description by CH Wright. He does a great job of explaining how this mechanic works and has a spreadsheet you can use to calculate your lucky hit in full detail. Link to the spreadsheet will also be in the description. Make sure to make a copy of the spreadsheet so you can adjust the values. Next, we're going to take Enhanced Ice Shards. This makes our Ice Shards have a 40% chance to ricochet to another enemy and will always ricochet off of frozen enemies. Free damage and a bit of AoE, so that's always helpful. For our next choice, we have to choose between either Greater Ice Shards or Destructive Ice Shards. Greater Ice Shards makes it so that while you have a barrier active, Cassive Ice Shards treat enemies as if they were frozen. I'd say this is a decent choice if you happen to use this build for the leveling process, but towards the mid and late game, you definitely want to spec into Destructive Ice Shards. Hitting an enemy with 5 ice shards in a single cast, which will happen most of the time, makes them vulnerable for 2 seconds. Vulnerable is one of the single best damage amplifiers in the game, and we always want to squeeze in as many ways to proc vulnerable and take advantage of that sweet, sweet multiplier. Let's pause here for just a moment to explain how all this works. Each instance of the 5 ice shards you fire with the skill has a chance to proc lucky hit. Everything else that gives us chances to proc additional ice shards, like enhanced ice shards, the ice shard enchantment, and also the piercing cold aspect, also has a chance to proc lucky hit. Next, we're going to spec into Devastation so we can just take 3 points into Elemental Dominance. This allows our core skill, which is our Ice Shards, to deal an additional 9% damage when cast at above 50 mana. Moving along, we're going to take 1 point into our first defensive skill in Flame Shield. The skill engulfs us in flames for 2 seconds, burning surrounding enemies for 40% damage per second. We could care less about the damage here as it's all about that immunity. You can pop a flame shield in a sticky situation or prior to a teleport into Frost Nova and just never be punished. It'll also cleanse you from any CC you have taken and you can just be on your merry way. We'll be branching first into Enhanced Flame Shield for the 25% movement speed while active. Next, we have a choice between Mystical Flame Shield, which makes it so that you gain 25% mana reduction while Flame Shield is active, 
or Shimmering Flame Shield, which heals you for 50% for missing life. With where the build is currently, we go for Shimmering Flame Shield for heal, as we have enough ways to not run out of mana. If you are having mana issues, Mystical is a great choice. Then we put one point into Teleport. Thanks to my amulet and plus four to teleport on my boots, we have eight points in total. Note that teleport also makes us unstoppable. We'll take enhanced teleport as this is required and gives us a 0.5 second CDR depending on how many enemies we hit. Then we have a choice between mystical teleport or shimmering. 100% shimmering for that extra damage reduction, which is going to be crucial for more survivability. Always try to get damage reduction where you can as it is super impactful to, you know, survive. Our next defensive skill that we will be taking is Ice Armor. Thanks again to my amulet, we have plus 4 to the skill. A barrier of ice forms around you for 6 seconds, absorbing X% percent of your base life in damage. While Ice Armor is active, 5% of your damage dealt is added to the barrier. This is also great for our survivability and adds one of our barrier mechanics. Then, we'll head to Enhanced Ice Armor so that we can have our mana regeneration increased by 25% during its duration. This helps keep up our infinite mana and provides us with a quick regen if we happen to run out. Then, for our last defensive skill, we take Frost Nova and max it out. Thanks to our amulet and our boots, we have plus 11 to the skill. This skill is essential for the whole build to function and is a skill that is required on every Sork build right now because it's just really good. Great crowd control and one of our two ways to apply vulnerable. We'll be taking the Enhanced Frost Nova Mastery, which will reduce the cooldown of our Nova by one second, up to four seconds for each enemy killed while frozen. Then we take Mystical Frost Nova because vulnerable is broken. Note that Frost Nova is also a great way to apply stagger to bosses. Heading to our next point in our tree, we come across another lucky hit mechanic in Elemental Attunement. Critical Strikes have up to a 5% chance to reset the cooldown of one of your defensive skills. This can only happen once every 10 seconds. With our crit chance nearing 100% most of the time, more on this a bit later, and with our lucky hit chance on this build, I pretty much noticed this proc once per the 10 second cooldown window when fighting mobs. On bosses, however, it's going to be much less noticeable. As for a glass cannon node, we have two points invested here, and the extra point comes from our chest piece, which we'll discuss a little bit later. I didn't max this out as I needed the extra point elsewhere for the tree. Even so, 18% increased damage at the cost of taking 9% is a fine trade-off. Next, we're going to grab three points into precision magic so we can gain an additional 15% lucky hit chance. We then head down to the align the elements and put one point here as this will help with a bit of our damage reduction versus elites. Then we max out both mana shield and protection as getting defense is going to help us a lot with not dying. Mana shield gives us 50% damage reduction when we spend 100 mana and protection gives us 30% of our max HP as a barrier anytime we use a cooldown. Remember, health scales with the level and we'll discuss where we can squeeze in health for our gear a little bit later. Moving along, we'll take Meteor, then Enhanced Meteor into Wizard's Meteor for that juicy Immobilize effect. This effect is going to be important to give us insane amounts of extra damage when combined with the Devouring Blaze node. Meteor will also apply Stagger to bosses to help fill up that Stagger bar. A perfect segue into taking one point into Inner Flames to grab three points into Devouring Blaze. Thanks to my amulet, more on this later, we have a total of six points here. This gives our crit strike damage a whopping 60% versus burning enemies and increases this to 150% on immobilized enemies. Remember, we're always burning enemies thanks to our Firebolt enchantment and we have immobilized now thanks to our Meteor. This is great for those pesky elites in higher nightmare dungeons as you can combo in with Meteor into teleport stun thanks to our Raiment into Frost Nova and the Ice Shards Blast. Heading to our ultimate skill, we don't take any. If you're not a fan of Meteor, or not geared for the Meteor gameplay, you can simply swap it out for Inferno or Deep Freeze. This will be up to you depending on your playstyle. We then take 3 points into the Permafrost for the 15% Elite Damage, Icy Touch for the extra 12% Cold Damage to Vulnerable Enemies, and Frigid Breeze to help sustain our infinite mana. Frigid on Lucky Hit has a 20% chance to generate 15 mana from cold damage done to vulnerable enemies. With our Lucky Hit chance reaching over 100% on this build, this node has a 17% chance to proc per cast or a 6.4% chance to proc per ice shard. If you want to take 3 points into Hoarfrost, we can do so by taking out all of our points into Flame Shield and placing it here for extra damage. Since our amulet gives us points into our defensive skills, we get Flame Shield for free. I personally prefer the Flame Shield route, but this is another option. Last, but definitely not least, we have the Lucky Hit engine that makes it so we have infinite mana in Avalanche. 
with the testing I've done, I prefer Avalanche over Shatter all the time. This allows our Frost skills to have a 10% lucky hit chance to make the next cast of Ice Shards, Frozen Orb, or Blizzard consume no mana and deal 40% increased damage. This chance is double to 20% versus vulnerable enemies. Pretty much most of the time, enemies that we will hit will be vulnerable, so with our lucky hit chance, Avalanche has a 17% chance to proc per cast or a 6.4% chance to proc per Ice Shard. Now, for this build to have that infinite mana feel, here are some thresholds in stats we want to meet. We want to get our combined lucky hit chance, this is base and with barrier, to be around 50% at first, then aim to get around 70% when you have better gear. From the testing I've done, 70% combined and with the help of more lucky hit from our Frigid Fade legendary node, more on this a little bit later as this is part of our paragon tree, this will add up to another 15% to pretty much sustain our infinite mana. We also want at least around 25% cooldown reduction, but the more, the better. This also applies to our mana reduction, the more, the better. Currently, with my mana reduction at 37.2% and 123 max mana, thanks to a few options in my Paragon board, I can cast 9 Ice Shards in a row, with each cast only costing 19 mana. Taking a look at my current stats, we have 62.5% base lucky hit and another 24.9% with the barrier active, bringing this total to 87.4%. This will go up to a 100% total lucky hit chance with the ideal conditions met when we take a look at the legendary node for the Frigid Fate Paragon board. Okay, let's take a full look at our gear, starting with our helmet. The stats you want to focus on are the following. Lucky hit chance with barrier, cooldown reduction, health, total armor, or max mana, and intelligence. For our aspect, we have Frost Blitz. This allows us one extra charge of Frost Nova with a 30 to 40% cooldown penalty between the charges. This cooldown increase is pretty negligible with our current 36% cooldown reduction, as well as the 11 points we have on Frost Nova. I'd still recommend using this aspect if you have less points into Nova and even less CDR, as it's really great for clearing mobs in succession. With our Frost Nova Mastery that also reduces the cooldown of Nova per enemy killed up to 4 seconds, we have a pretty good uptime of never having to wait for Nova to be on cooldown. Just try to get a roll like under 35% if possible, and Frost Nova is also great at adding to a boss's stagger bar. If you do find the cooldown penalty to be too much, I'll have a list of swappable aspects at the end of the gear section. Note that this aspect can only be looted. Before we move on to our chest piece, let's talk about what to socket our gear with for our armor pieces. You can choose between Topaz or Ruby. The max HP Rubies helps us with more berry received from our protection node, and Topazes provide us with a 10% damage reduction while you're being control impaired. Both are good options here, just choose what works best for you. For our chest, we have the legendary unique in Raiment of the Infinite. This has pretty good stats for us in general, but what makes it so good for any sort build really is the unique aspect. After using Teleport, close enemies are pulled to you and stunned for 2-3 seconds, but Teleport's cooldown is increased by 20%. This increase in cooldown doesn't really affect us too much, since we have high CDR and the extra points into Teleport thanks to our boots and amulet. We simply TP into a mob, they get pulled into our black hold, and we destroy everything with Frost Nova and Ice Shards. Note that the stun from Raymond also adds to the stagger bar for bosses. Now, an alternative if you do not have this chest piece yet is to use a full defensive chest piece. I actually recommend this option for really high nightmare dungeons if you feel like Raymond is falling off, as enemies there are no joke. Stats to focus on for the full defensive chest pieces are damage reduction, damage reduction from close and damage reduction from distant enemies, damage reduction from burning enemies, health, or total armor. Here's an example of the chest piece replacement that I am saving to push those higher nightmare dungeons for fun. We'll probably also have to swap to more defensive focus glyphs in our paragon tree as well. For our gloves, the stats we want to focus on are lucky hit chance, plus skill to ice shards, attack speed, crit chance, intelligence, and probably lucky hit resource regeneration as like a last resort. The aspect we are using is conceited aspect. Deal 15 to 25% increased damage while you have a barrier active. We have a barrier up nearly 100% of the time, so this is a great option. Before we head over to our pants, I want to discuss two other options for gloves. The first is Frostburn. I played a lot with Frostburn and its aspect, but choose to use my current gloves as I miss the attack speed, lucky hit chance, and the plus skills to our ice shards. The second option for gloves, and this is a pretty fun option, is Fist of Fate. When paired with the shared misery aspect, more on this when we get to our boots, we'll be spreading days and immobilize like no other, at the cost of some of our stats in lucky hit, attack speed, crit chance, plus skills to ice shards. Note 
that we'll still be in the 70% combined lucky hit threshold after swapping our gloves for Fist of Fate. I got the worst possible roll in mind for its unique aspect, but the frequency of spreading days for CC and also mobilize for the extra devouring blaze damage is pretty nice. Just remember though, Fist of Fate does make it so our attacks randomly deal anywhere between 1 to 300% in damage. This can lead to pretty nice numbers at times, but also some pretty low numbers as well. However, Fist of Fate actually does allow us to push higher Nightmare Terror dungeons with only a glove swap with our current setup. I was able to complete up to a tier 66 Nightmare Dungeon with Fist of Fate thanks to its additional CC and days, and pretty much every enemy also being immobilized. But keep in mind that this does mean elites will become unstoppable more often. If you do want to go the Fist of Fate route, you probably don't need to use Meteor for Immobilize since Fist of Fate plus the aspect of Shared Misery will do the trick. Use those three extra points into something else. Moving to our pants, the stats we want to focus on will be the exact same as our non Raymond chess piece in damage reduction, damage reduction from close and damage reduction from distant enemies, damage reduction from burning enemies, health, and total armor. The aspect we have rolled on our pants is the single most powerful defensive aspect in the game in Disobedience. Every single build in D4 should probably have this aspect slotted in. You gain 0.25% to 0.50% increased armor for 4 seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking up to 25-50%. to Since we are dealing damage all the time, when this fully procs, which doesn't take that long at all, we will have near our close 85% damage reduction cap. This is an aspect you can get for free by completing the Halls of the Damned Dungeon in Kedjistan. Other options for pants can be something like Ice Heart or Temerity as an example. Iceheart has a pretty nice Frost Nova aspect, and even more so when combined with the aspect of Shared Misery, more on this next. Temerity, while its unique effect is pretty nice at keeping us at 100% barrier with our potions, the stats here are horrible, great in a pinch, but better options for sure. Moving to our boots, the stats we want to focus here are plus ranks to Frost Nova, plus ranks to Teleport, Mana Cost Reduction, Movement Speed, or Intelligence. Note that our boots currently give us a cooldown on our evade when we attack. This is really great when we're in the battlefield as it pretty much means we have no cooldown on our evade thanks to how fast we cast our ice shards. That said though, I'd probably prefer max evade charges for faster map movement in general. The aspect we are using here is one of my favorites in Shared Misery and why we don't need Ice Heart, Frostburn, or even the Snap Freeze node on our class tree. On Lucky Hit, when we hit a crowd controlled enemy, there is up to a 30 to 50% chance for that crowd control effect to spread to another unaffected enemy. So, how can we apply crowd controlled enemies? We have Frost Nova, Stun from the Raymond's Teleport, Fist of Fate's Daze, and we have Immobilize. What's super interesting about this aspect is how it works with the multitude of ways of applying ice shards. Once we apply a crowd control, for example, let's say Immobilize, continual casts of ice shards have a lucky hit chance as long as Immobilize is still on the initial target or targets to spread the Immobilize status to any enemy the Ice Shards hit. This also applies to your Raymond Stun, Frost Nova Freezes, and Fist of Face Dazes. Pro tip, pairing Ice Hearts with Shared Misery for farming is a really fun time. Make sure to also use Shared Misery with Fist of Fate for its full potential as well. Heading over to our amulet, make sure to socket your jewelry with Skulls for increased armor as it's the best option. The stats we want to focus on are cooldown, mana cost reduction, plus ranks to devouring blaze, plus ranks to defensive skills, plus ranks to glass cannon or any other passive that fits your build, or movement speed. The aspect we're running on our amulet is elementalist. The aspect makes it so that our core or mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana gain a 20-40% to increased critical strike chance. Trust me when I say that we are going to be at or above 100 mana the majority of the time. Make sure you put this aspect on your amulet as values on amulets are increased by 50%. On a current setup, this brings our crit chance to 89%. We can squeeze in more crit chance if our gloves rolled higher or if we had crit chance rolled on our focus. Heading to our rings, the stats you want to focus on are crit chance, crit damage, vulnerable damage, lucky hit, or max HP. You want to try to at least get both crit and vulnerable if possible. Other stats you can focus on are things like damage to close, cold damage, damage to frozen, and damage to burning. Now, I wish I had the Ring of Starless Skies drop even once, but it looks to be as rare as the Shaco. This ring has some pretty decent stats, lucky hit chance, critical strike chance, critical strike damage, and core skill damage. However, its unique aspect is pretty awesome. 
Each consecutive core skill cast reduces the resource cost of your next core skill by 8 to 12%, up to a maximum of 40%. Would love to test this, but you know, RNG is RNG. That said, you do not want to focus on resource regeneration as a stat for this build, but if it happens to drop, feel free to use it. The first aspect on our ring is accelerating. Critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by 15 to 25% for 5 seconds. We're pretty much critting most of the time thanks to Elementalist Aspect on our amulet and our base crit chance. More attack speed is great as ice shards scale with more attack speed. For the aspect on our second ring, we have the aspect of control. You deal 25 to 35% more damage to enemies that are stunned, immobilized, or frozen. Just be a bit cautious in higher nightmare dungeons as if you apply CCs too fast like I mentioned earlier, elites can go into unstoppable mode where we will not be able to re-CC them for a period of time. My go-to combo for these elites that usually will go into unstoppable if we don't kill them fast enough is Meteor into the Immobilize plus Teleport into the Stun into Nova into the Ice Shards Blast. When comboed correctly, you'll see that the health bar just disappears. Thanks to our build being able to apply Frozen, Stun, and Immobilize, we will get to triple dip into this aspect. Pro tip, when bosses get into the stagger phase, they also count as being affected by all types of CC, giving this aspect even more value. This is an aspect you can get for free by completing the Sunken Library dungeon in Kedjikstan. Moving on to our weapon, this is where we want something with a decent item power, more item power on our weapon, and offhand equals more damage. I personally recommend that you run with a wand in focus, as wand provides lucky hit as a base stat and a higher base attack speed versus staffs. The focus also provides cooldown reduction as a base stat as well as higher base attack speed. Staffs are also fine to use if you have one that's better versus the wand and focus combo and does provide higher damage due to its base and also the 100% aspect boost. That said, don't tunnel vision on getting a wand or focus with the highest item power and ignoring the stats we want. The stats provide a lot of damage and is more important than a wand or focus with bad stats and higher item power. Here are the stats you want to focus on for your wand. Intelligence, Vulnerable Damage, Crit Damage, and Core Skill Damage. These four are the best in slot in my opinion, but others can work such as Damage to Close, Damage to Burning, and Damage to Frozen. For the socket choice for our wand and our focus, we want to go with Emeralds. This adds Critical Strike Damage to Vulnerable Enemies. For our aspect, we have the Aspect of Piercing Cold. This allows Ice Shards to pierce 3-4 times, dealing 25-20% to less damage per subsequent enemy hit. The value will change on staffs as two-handers get a 100% bonus, similarly to Amulet's 50. Remember earlier how we went over how many ways Ice Shards can proc lucky hits? Well, add one more to the list. And lastly, for our focus, the stats to focus, pun not intended, are Mana Cost Reduction, Lucky Hit, Lucky Hit with Barrier, Cooldown Reduction, Lucky Hit to Resources, and Crit Chance. The aspect we are using for our focus is the Aspect of Frozen Memories. The Avalanche key passive now applies to one additional cast, another huge way to sustain our infinite mana and pretty key to this build as this will allow up to two free casts with no mana and increase damage. We proc Avalanche a lot. Pro tip, you can see your passives proccing near your XP bar down at the bottom during gameplay. That covers our gear. Before we move on to our Paragon board, here's a list of other aspects you can use while you're ramping up to this build options for more defense, and in general, what works with Ice Shards. First, we have the Prodigy's Aspect. Second, we have the Storm Swell Aspect. Third, we have the Adventurer's Aspect. Fourth, the Fortune's Aspect. Fifth, the Ghost Wasters Aspect. And at six, we have the Edge Master's Aspect. Let's head to our Paragon. We'll try to keep this quick as the full board along with this full build is in the Maxwell Planner linked down below. I have a few other versions of the board with 7 glyphs versus 6, as well as a more defense focused board for higher nightmare dungeons, but this one feels into lucky hit, and we can't call the build lucky shards and not go all into lucky hit. Keep in mind, this is an endgame board, so please do not copy this for the leveling process. We start with elementalists to get the bonus to our non physical nodes, as well as 40 intelligence to proc our bonus from this glyph. We want to just grab 40 intelligence here, as there is no additional bonus for grabbing more intelligence for this specific glyph. Note that the glyphs we are using are all upgraded to level 15. Make sure you get the glyphs you want to use to at least level 15 first for the radius bonus, then you can individually choose which one you want to max out first. Then, we head up to Frigid Fate, we drop in Tactician for the bonus to our rare nodes and for the additional bonus giving us 10% increase in damage after casting a defensive skill. 
Just make sure to grab enough decks here to proc the additional bonus. We then move down to grab oppressive for the vulnerable damage, and we meet the deck's requirement for the additional 10% vulnerable damage as well. Move up and grab the Frigid Fate Legendary Node, where dealing cold damage to vulnerable enemies increases your lucky hit chance by 1% for 5 seconds up to 15%. This is an additive bonus that adds up to our lucky hit chance stat on our character sheet. We also grab Advantage and the surrounding lucky hit nodes. Then we grab Guarded for the additional damage reduction from vulnerable enemies, and we easily meet the dex requirement for the additional bonus as well. Next is Burning Instinct for the Destruction Node to gain increases to our crit damage. We want to get all the dex nodes in this glyph area as more dex equals more crit damage. We also get a nice additional bonus to our crit strikes, increasing all damage enemies takes from you by 2 seconds for 10 seconds, stacking up to 12%. Thanks to our ability to stay within the 80 to 100% crit range, with our base crit and the elementalist aspect, we benefit from this node a lot. We also take Cinders, Smoldering Embers, and move down to grab Kindling and Safeguard. Near close to level 100, we will hit the 360 willpower threshold, 365 to be exact, to also get the additional bonus from both Kindling and Cinders. From here, we want to move up to open the fourth board in Ceaseless Conduit, then move back down to the Burning Instinct board into Elemental Summoner. We want to open Ceaseless as our fourth board so the dex requirement threshold is less to benefit from the additional damage to elites from the Hunter Killer node. In Elemental Summoner, we'll be grabbing Reservoir to add to our max mana, which will benefit our Elementalist aspect on our amulet. Head down and grab Conjure so we can get Exploit into our Glyph here for the increase in vulnerable damage. Make sure to grab all the dex nodes within the Glyph's area as well for the scaling and additional bonus. When we move up to the Ceaseless Conduit board, we'll be socketing in control, making sure to grab all the dex nodes for the scaling and additional bonus, then move to the Hunter Killer for the elite damage increase. For our last board, we go into Searing Heat to slot in Flame Feeder for the increased damage to burning enemies, make sure to grab all the dex nodes within the glyph area for the scaling and additional bonus, and for our remaining points, we're going to head down and grab Combustion for more crit damage. Now that we've covered the Paragon board, here are a few tips and tricks you can apply to your Lucky Shards gameplay to maximize its fluidity. Number one, our defensive skills immensely help with our survivability. While we do have a good amount of survivability through our skill tree, gear, and aspects, the reality is we're not spec for being tanky. Our teleport gives us damage reduction after cast and makes us unstoppable. This can get us out of CC and help us reposition. Same applies to our Flame Shield, Immunity, Heal, and Cleanse. Then we have Ice Armor for the Barrier and Frost Nova for the Crowd Control. At number 2, Teleport is great for our Engage and when combined with the Raiment of the Infinite is what fuels our max damage combo. Drop a Meteor, Teleport in, Stun and Group all the enemies, Frost Nova and Blast with your Ice Shards. When you're just doing normal content in this game that's not high tier Nightmare Dungeons or group play, you can just go in and Frost Nova and not worry about Meteor because the Frost Nova with the Ice Shards enchantment pretty much takes out the whole mob anyways. Number 3, Meteor can act as a pseudo Frost Nova in the case your two charges are ever on cooldown. Your engage combo will basically be the same, minus of course the Frost Nova. For number 4, if you choose to run Fist of Fate for your gloves, feel free to swap out Meteor and put those 3 points from the skill tree into something more to your liking. Remember, you'll also want to run the aspect of Share Misery with Fist of Fate for its maximum potential. Number 5, if you also want to save points into Flame Shield and allocate them elsewhere, you can do this too. Remember that we have plus to defensive skills thanks to our amulet. This means that Flame Shield is free as long as we don't need to expand into its link nodes, which will free up 3 more skill tree points. At number 6, try not to spam Frost Nova for a single target enemy unless it's an elite you want to burst down. Remember that our Frost Nova gets a 1 second cooldown per charge up to 4 seconds depending on the enemies killed. Number 7, swap out Ice Shard's enchantment to Frostbolt when facing bosses in higher nightmare dungeons to apply chill to get them into stagger mode faster. You can also increase the stagger bar versus bosses with your teleport stun, Frost Nova, Days from Fist of Fate, Meteor, and Immobilize. Remember to swap back to the Ice Shards enchantment after the boss fight. Number 8, if you're ever in a situation and you happen to run out of mana, simply just wait a few seconds for your bar to fill up or pop your ice armor for mana regeneration. Number 9, don't forget about your evade. You can use this not only for disengage, but like a second teleport to evade in into a Frost Nova engage. Number 10, also don't forget about your potions. They always drop during combat and adds a lot to your survivability. And for a last tip that's not really a tip, remember that you're still playing a sorcerer or sorceress. 
prepare to get one shot at times if you're not paying attention, especially with exploding mobs, those annoying nightmare dungeon affixes, a skeleton archer, those crossbows from off screen, quill rats, charging bulls, bears, a stick falling from a tree, and you know, the list goes on. That's it for this one, and somehow it ended up being near 30 minutes. I tried to keep it as short as possible, but there was a lot to discuss here, and thanks again for everyone who stuck around for the full guide. I'll most likely do an updated build guide once I get to level 100 and max out my glyphs, focusing more on pushing higher tier nightmare dungeons. Remember that the full build is linked via the max roll d4 planner in the video description down below, as well as the other helpful links I mentioned earlier. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and I'd also appreciate a follow on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Till the next one, peace.